All right, recording and cut here. Welcome to What Happened This Week. This week on our episode, going to be making some NBA playoff predictions. Uh, going to talk a little bit more about the MVP race in the NBA, even though I believe that's all wrapped up. And going to be talking a little bit about Manchester City winning the Premier League as that happened. Well, it happened today, but it'll be tomorrow, or not tomorrow. It'll be yesterday for all of you who are listening or Tuesday, last Tuesday or, you know, a Tuesday or, you know, May 11th, whatever, you know, whatever you're listening. Uh, I just real quick want to thank everyone who will be listening to this podcast. Really appreciate you. Make sure you are checking out previous podcasts. Make sure you are following on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or I guess subscribed on YouTube. Um, what else are we on? Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Anchor. We're all over the place. Make sure you check all of those out. We stream every Friday on YouTube, so make sure you're checking that out if you haven't already. Um, leave us a review on Apple. We have, I think, 10 reviews now, so shout out to whoever has reviewed us. Appreciate you. You're making a difference. Um, and yeah, I hope you're having a great day whenever you're listening, or a great evening, I don't know, or a great morning. You know, you listen whenever. And I also just real quick want to say, we recently hit over 200, 200, <laughs> 2,000 total listens on apps. So, you know, that's that's all our listening stuff minus YouTube because you can't upload in the same place. So anyway, I just really want to thank anybody who has been listening, wherever you are, you know, we are literally all over the globe. And, you know, from Guam to Germany to Brooklyn, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for checking us out. And I hope y'all enjoy this episode. Peace. All right. First topic on the chopping block. Well, I don't know if I'd call it a chopping block. I'd kind of just say first topic, you know. Anyway, playoff predictions for the NBA. Um, just want to say, go Brooklyn Nets. We're we're almost at the playoffs. We've already clinched. Try and get that two seed. I know we're almost there, but please, please try your hardest. Anyway, some predictions. I think, first of all, that the Lakers are going to end up the seventh seed. They're going to have to play in their playing game. They'll smoke whoever the fuck they play because it's LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And, you know, Anthony Davis may be a very overqualified number two, but he's still Anthony Davis. So they're going to smoke whoever they play. Literally, like, it, it's not even going to be close. Um, I also think that they will, no matter who they play, in the playoffs, I think they'll make it to the Western Conference Finals. And if they play the Phoenix Suns, if if Phoenix can make the number one seed, if they can if they can usurp Utah, which doesn't look too likely right now, and you know avoid playing the Lakers until the West Finals, I think they're going to get routed in the West Finals because I, again, it's LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They haven't shown some real life recently, but overall, it's still one of the best tandems in the NBA. I almost said NFL. That's not correct. Uh, another prediction is I believe that the Miami Heat will end up playing the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, I think that'll happen in the first round if Miami can stay at six and Milwaukee can't get past three, which is it, it's looking pretty likely. Um, I think that that series will go to seven games. Uh, I think Mil Milwaukee will win because Miami isn't what they were last year. But you know, it's you know, you look at you look at who Milwaukee is going to potentially have to play 
And it's going to be Miami the first round, Brooklyn the second round, and then if they beat Brooklyn, fingers crossed they don't, they will have to then play Philadelphia, who will probably be there. And then in the finals, you play the Lakers. Like, sheesh i know that's kind of like a tiktok thing right now but sheesh that is a gauntlet and god damn um i do think that tyler hero will come to life because i think after not and it hasn't been necessarily a down year as much as it's just been a disappointing year you know his averages are pretty close to what they were for his rookie season. So, I don't know. I think that if he's right, then they will definitely take Miami to seven. Anyway, another prediction. I think the Denver Nuggets are going to lose a lot sooner than people think. I don't think it'll be the first round, but the second round, mm, if they if they have to pay, play the Clippers... Man, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough as hell, and it it's just a situation where, you know, Jokic is 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 probably gonna win MVP. Probably, it's like ninety percent gonna happen unless something like I I I I I mean we'll we'll get into that a little later just because I know that I mentioned that in my intro anyway. Another prediction. Um, well, back on the Nuggets, actually. I think they just don't have the depth to last that long. And if they play a team like the Clippers or the Suns, it's just not going to go well for them. Um, another prediction is I think the Knicks will actually, you know, I think they can go further than people think. Um, right now, they're the four. Atlanta's the five. So you have those two play. And, you know... Atlanta, yes, they are extremely talented on offense, but they don't have a play style that's conducive for the NBA playoffs. So let's see what happens. Anyway, uh, one last prediction, and then this segment is over. I believe that the NBA champion will be my very own Brooklyn Nets. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I said it. Um, I think once James Harden comes back from injury, he will, this team is going to be untouchable. I know they haven't played too many games together. They is Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden, but there's just sort of an unstoppable nature to this team that, you know, we saw earlier in the season that we haven't seen now. And I think once you're locked in, in, in the playoffs and it's like, Oh, you want to double James Harden? Cool. Freaking Kevin Durant is going to drive baseline and dunk all over your face if he doesn't have anyone guarding him. It's it's a pick your poison matchup and I don't know if anyone has the firepower or the defensive capabilities to match them. No, not even the Philadelphia 76ers. You heard it here. I was maybe not first, but you heard it here. <laughs> Next topic is talking about the MVP race right now that's going on in the NBA. So as I mentioned earlier, I definitely believe that Nikola Jokic has it like like 90%. He's got it, right? Not not 90%, maybe maybe a little bit, like maybe 91%. But Steph Curry's there, man. Steph Curry is more than likely going to win the scoring title. Um uh, sorry for Bradley Beal, but he's not going to make it to the finish line because he has a hamstring injury that will keep him out of the final games. And I think that Steph is still fighting to keep the players, players, the Warriors in the playoffs. I'm, I'm, I, what happened there was I mixed Warriors and playoffs. Anyway, um, so. You know, Steph keeps dropping these insane numbers, and if you look at his games with 10 three-pointers or more made, he's at, like, 24, and everybody else is in single digits. First of all, that's insane. I know it doesn't, like, come into the NBA MVP conversation for this season, but just as a body of work, like, holy shit, 
This man is... He has to be considered the best shooter of all time. You, get, you can take your Kevin Durant's. You can take your Ray Allen's. You can take your Reggie Miller's. Nobody's ever done what Steph Curry has done. Anyway, yes, Steph is carrying his team on his back. And without Steph, the Warriors would be doo-doo water. But I just don't think throughout the season he's done enough. You know, Jokic has been there the entire season been busting his ass the entire season and you know at one point after Jamal Murray went down with the torn ACL they were like nine and one in games you know since Murray tore his ACL and I don't know I think something has to be said about Jokic continuing to do that you know Steph dropped like 49 he had a game where he had like it, it was something insane like against OKC he, I think it was, I think it was like fifty after you know three quarters or something. And that was, by the way, that was with a very good defender and Lou Dort on him. And I know, oh, it's Oklahoma City, but you can't tell me that Oklahoma City doesn't try hard. You watch those games. I know they're losing a lot, but you watch those games. You tell me that Oklahoma City doesn't try. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Uh, what would it take for Steph Curry to win MVP? I think he would have to like, I think he would have to average 50 over the last couple games here and just truly, truly, truly just explode. I, I don't, you know, I, I think at this point it is a foregone conclusion, as I said, but you know, who knows? Stranger things in life have happened. Donald Trump became president of the United States. So it can happen, folks. Don't knock it. But again, if you were to ask me right now, if I was a betting man, I'd easily put my money on Nikola Jokic. It's it's not even a question. You know, I know that people kind of rag on Jokic for complaining to the refs for fouls. And, you know, they're like, oh, man, he's almost as bad as Luka. Not as bad as Luka, but almost as bad as Luka. But, you know, it's... It, it, it's got to be over at this point. Jokic has the durability this season. He has the numbers this season. His team is competing at a very high level. And honestly, if Curry is able to swoop in, it'll be incredible. But it it should be over. But Curry is definitely making Jokic work for it. All right, last topic going to talk about Manchester City winning the Barclays Premier League today or yesterday or May 11th, as it's also commonly known. Um, I, you know, mm, as a Liverpool fan, this is it. It's not a it's not a tough one, but you're just like, ah. Man City again? You know, there's a certain undeniable part of this where, like, yeah, you know what? City is, they're good. They have their system figured out, and they're definitely hooping. Like, I, there's there's literally no denying that. But, you know, they also... They also spend the most. And I I know, I know, like, oh, Liverpool also spent a lot of money. But Manchester City, year in, year out, they're able to bring in players who just can contribute at such a high level. And players who, you know, if if it doesn't work out at Manchester City, gone. They're gone. You know, this is this is sort of at the level that Real Madrid was at during sort of the mid to early 2000s where it's like oh you're not good enough buy you we'll just we'll just buy somebody who's even better than you since you know you clearly can't play and if you aren't delivering results man city you know they're gonna they're gonna get you out of here there's uh, uh, again i don't want to shit too much on man city because they did just win their title and props to go to them but it's been a weird season, and I would love to believe that if Virgil van Dijk didn't tear his ACL and Joe Gomez wasn't out for so long and, you know, all these injuries to Liverpool, blah, 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 blah. I know some people would be like, oh, Colin, you know, Manchester City had injuries last season, blah, 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 blah. But 
it's uh, it's still annoying that they won. Let let me be annoyed. Let me be a, a petty Liverpool fan who's annoyed. And I know their results speak otherwise to that because you know they straight up they have dominated the season and it's sort of been just a stranglehold on the league for the good part of now a decade and I know like oh you know Manchester United you know the early parts but uh City City have been there and they've won just I, I think it's like six or seven prems now and uh, it, uh, it it's annoying and it and it sucks because you're like you want there to be better competition but unfortunately nobody can spend with Manchester City and you know of course there's like the moral part of this where it's like uh oh, where's Manchester City's money coming from you know because do you, do you really believe that there's that much revenue going into Manchester City? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe there are that many Manchester City jerseys out there? You know, granted, I don't live in Manchester or England, but I don't know. If if I'm seeing if I'm seeing soccer or football jerseys, a lot of the time they're not Manchester City. I don't know. It's still just Yeah, you know, props to them, props to Pep Guardiola, but it is sus for sure. Anyway, this has been What Happened This Week. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check out previous podcasts. Make sure you're following, you're liking, you're subscribing on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, wherever you're listening. We are there. Um, Check out previous episodes. Check out our streams. Check it out. We're we're friendly. Hit us up. If you want to be on a podcast, hit us up. Uh, we've got some really cool, you know, sort of other logos coming out that a friend of the podcast helped design. So, you know, shout out to Ty. She did an amazing job with sort of a Keith Herring style logo that I personally really fuck with. Anyway, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. Hope you're having a great day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whenever it is. Thank you so, so, so much for listening. Make sure you get vaccinated. Stay safe. And I'll see you at the next one. Peace.